Welcome into Check, Please, presented by DC Prime. This is where we talk everything about the Washington football team and also catching up with those that played for the Burgundy and Gold as well. Joining me today is Vernon Davis and Logan Paulson. We are just going all tight end on this one, so why not? Yes, here we are. Welcome on in, Vernon. Nice to have you around. Logan, of course, does shows with us throughout the week as well. So, uh, Vernon, we're making him a TV star. It's tough, man. She's got her work cut out for you. You know what I mean? Like, you got that beautiful smile, that nice muscles, all that stuff. Like, it's hard for me. I'm trying to catch up to you. You don't need a beard. I don't have a beard like yours. What are you Look at that beard, about? man. Right here, man. Look at that, man. On, man. Ew, oh, Vernon, it's, it's... That's a Hugh Jackman beard. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a compliment. It would be. Coming from this side of the table. Yeah. Um, Vernon, it's been a little bit, though, since we've had the opportunity to catch up with you. And we know that you have adventured into this movie acting career. And you know, of course, before we sat down, Logan looked up your IMBD to see yep. how it was, and it says you've been quite busy. It says you're doing 18 movies, or you have done 18 movies. You know movies. what, I'm, I'm, he, he caught me by surprise, because normally, you know, an athlete is not pulling up your IMDb. Whoa. I don't know about IMDb, who knows about <laughs> IMDb? This guy, this guy has a background in film. That's not true. Not like you. So you have done multiple levels of the filmmaking process. You've produced movies, you've acted in movies. What is your favorite part of that process? Um, the favorite part of the process, I think um, just learning. Yeah. The journey, just the, the experience and just like, every time I go on set, I learn something totally different. Right. It's, it's a great experience, man. Because we were talking about at the top, like you've had football your whole life, and now this is like a totally new adventure for you, right? And I'm sure like that's got to be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it is pretty cool to just, just you know, just jump right into it. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? It's, uh, but like I tell everyone, it's, it's just starting. I started, actually started like acting while I was playing. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, oh, so where did the love first come for wanting to go into this next job? I think just my art studio background. You know, I went to school, I studied art. Went to school at Maryland, by the yeah. way. <laughs> I studied art there, and then um, when I arrived in San Francisco, I took a class while well, I entered a, a school called the Shelton Theater of Art. In San Francisco? Yeah. And what was that? Was that painting or was No, that... it was just uh, improv classes. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those improv classes seem so yeah. crazy to me. Were, were, were they fun? Oh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. A lot of activities. And, you know, my coaches, my teammates didn't know. I oh, just, really? I would leave practice and go right to class. Right, we're talking a little bit about your film career as well. Tell us about the latest movie that you're doing. The latest movie, the one I just finished is a movie with Morgan Freeman. That had to be so cool, right? Yeah, it was intense. It was, it was really cool, but it was intense because I play a serial killer. It's based on a true story. What kind of research goes into that? <laughs> <laughs> this is this is what we need to get into. Yeah, <laughs> how, do, how do you how do you study for your character wow. when you're a serial killer? Well, you just create. You just use. I, I need a sip of wine for this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it's funny. No, you just create a you just you create the character. You create a backstory and you use parts of your life that uh, that you can relate to this character based on how you get clues is what they're saying about this character in the film. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. You kind of use that stuff. I'm curious right. how you relate to a serial killer. Well, there's there's different characteristics about uh, about the person. He is a serial killer, but there's parts to him based on what they say in the script right. and what you feel from reading, you know, the material. And don't you kind don't you kind of have to find something to kind of like make a truth out of it, right? Like Well, the way I do it is I use real I use real parts of my life right to kind of find yeah, I use stories right? yeah I mean there's many there's so many parts of your life that you can that you can use to create to find that emotion that you yeah, need. yeah you know Absolutely. maybe you have someone a death in your family or some experiences you had with your your mom or your dad you use that stuff yeah. I would because I would imagine that's really stressful and emotional to, to, to call that up do you find that that's been tough at all it's very emotional very yeah. tough but once you a, <clears throat> a wise man once told me he said once you can can learn to accept the things that you've experienced, yeah. you can act it. Wow, yeah. You know, I think that's probably why I, I tried acting. I like the improv two classes. Yes. But the same thing as they told me, you have to pull on stuff. They wanted me to cry. I couldn't cry. <laughs> and then he looks at me, he goes, you had a Cinderella childhood, didn't you? Like, I, I grew up in a very, well, it, it wasn't until later in life that I could probably pull on those inner emotions to be able to have <laughs> the tears come down and the emotion and the drama. Um, but we look forward to seeing that and of course the 18 movies, the new oh, show yeah. coming out. 18. Well, I, didn't know when it, we... I didn't know it was that many projects. It's so, it's well, it's not 18 movies, it's probably 18 different projects. On but... IMDb it says you were in Baywatch. 
I was. That was what the did, first. That was one of my first films. What were you in while I was playing? I had a basketball scene. Yeah, just kind of like catch it. So you start at the beginning and then work your way up. You were hoping he was yeah, running out of the wall I with was. Did you see him with his shirt off? Dude, <laughs> makes you jealous in a second, right? I know you know that. Do you know that? I know that. On know that, that note, um, we do, we are here at DC Prime, so it is time to get into some of the grub. We have some appetizers that we are going to enjoy, and when we come back, we're going to get a little bit more into what the expectations are for this current team as well. So nice catching up with the guys, but we're going to get into some of the nitty gritty of the X's and O's. We come back here on Check Please, presented by DC Prime. But guys, let's let's take in. You get some get some Brussels sprouts. Here. Awesome. Let's do it. With a Honda in your garage, every summer adventure leads to another. Kickstart your summer with a great deal on a Pilot, Accord, or HRV only at the Honda Summer Sales Event. I need you to get me out of the country, out of here, away. All in exchange for a sip of coffee? Yeah. It's Black Rifle Coffee. Let's try some. Later, loser! Why don't you head over to blackriflecoffee.com and get yourself set up with a coffee club subscription. It's about grit. It's about guts. It's about winning. It's about where we come from and what we can be. It's about DC and celebrating our football team. With the Washington football team scratcher from the DC Lottery, you can win up to $50,000 as well as some exciting second chance opportunities. And you can continue your winning experience at DCILottery.com. This week on FanDuel Sportsbook, we're offering an exclusive odds boost to new customers. So you can turn I like those odds. into I love those odds. And Lil Dubs into Big Dubs. But it's only happening now. Make every moment more with FanDuel Sportsbook when you boost your odds right now. Whew, you big, man. New customers get exclusive 40 to 1 odds on any team to win their week one matchup. Bet $5 to win 200 back on Check Please, presented by DC Prom. We've got some appetizers, we have some steaks, some salmon coming, and we are sitting here and catching up with Vernon Davis and Logan Paulson. Um, Vernon, you were at the game, the season opener against the Chargers. Logan, I know we've been breaking down the film all week long, but let's talk a little bit about where this team currently stands. Now in year two with head coach Ron Rivera taking over. Um, Vernon, your, your takeaway, because the team came out in high expectations on defense. See, they struggled a little bit. Offense, of course, unfortunately, the quarterback changed, getting a little bit into rhythm. What's your overall kind of take on where the team stands right now and what they need to improve upon? Like I was just telling Logan, I, I think uh, I think this team has the right energy. I mean, they came out of that tunnel. You could tell that they were fired up and they were on the same page. Because we know, Logan, you and I know, we both know, if you're not on the same page, if you don't have chemistry, you're not going to win any games. But How can you tell that they have that their chemistry? Their presence, though? the way their yeah. demeanor, the way they walked out. I mean, you, you look for that stuff. I mean, I, I remember being on teams where when guys walked out, when I had, when I was playing for, for Mike Singletary, yeah. oh, I mean, he, he was all about body language. He said, guys, we came out of that tunnel. He, he, he looked at us and he said, guys, last week we came out of that tunnel, and we did not have any fire. We did not have, not have any energy. Normally you see that towards the end of the season, right? But these guys, I mean, I can tell that they're confident. They're using all of the, the energy and the momentum that they had from last season. And, I mean, I, I think we have a pretty good team this year. I think we have a really good team to watch Did football. you see the energy coming out from them to start? You know, I wasn't at the game, so it's hard to tell because you just get the TV copy, yeah. you get the L22, so it's different. But, yeah, I thought the guys played well. You know, obviously it's the first game. There's some hiccups here and there, but, you know, I think there is a foundation, a cultural foundation like that Vernon's alluding to that makes you think there's something here. Just got to so get it on the right track. When they come out and, and they don't have that kind of performance and you see the Chargers have that quick drive right on down the field where they score, and it, it, 
What does it take for them to kind of get into where they're not making, as Coach Rivera said, they were they were making mistakes. Yeah. They were missing assignments, yeah. the communication, with things that seemed a little more fundamental. I, I mean, I, it's it's hard because like you know, a lot of the guys didn't play a ton of the preseason, right? And I, I'm, I'm a big believer, like we've talked about, of getting of taking advantage of that time to kind of hash out some of those issues early on, right? And I think. You know, that, that may be cause for some of the mistakes, but that's why you have the time to come off the sideline to get the coach to come over and talk to you and say, hey, we're going to make these corrections, we've got to get this done. And the, the next two drives, I think the Chargers went three and out. So obviously they were able to kind of correct some element of that uh, dysfunction. What did you say, Vernon? Like, yeah, I, um, for me, I think the first game is one of those games where you allow, of course we know about mistakes. We know what mistakes can do to you. It can cost, it can cost you. It can cost you the game, um, of course, but that second game, you, uh, you, there's no room for mistakes. Is it somebody that's saying, is it a teammate saying something? Is a coach saying something? Is it guys just yeah, locking just, in differently? It's the team. It's, it, it shouldn't have to be the coaches. As a team, you hold yourself accountable, right? If Logan comes up to me and he sees something that I did, I, I have to listen. I have to, you know, I have to listen to them, you know, because we're, we're playing together. You know, we should be able to go in this locker room and go on the field and not even have the coaches there. When I was in Denver, Peyton Manning, he brought the guys out. It wasn't the coaches, right? There should be somebody on that team as a leader to bring those guys out, right? And they, But they have that. They Washington football team has that. I mean, they have it so? offensively. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's because Peyton Manning is one of the greatest leaders of the last generation, right? Like, you talked about how he's the OC on the field. I've heard that from multiple people. Like. He's a unicorn, he's special, right? Who is that guy for this team in your opinion? You know, is it Chase Young? Is it, you know, is there a guy on offense you really like? I mean, Logan Thomas is an older guy, been around tight end. I don't know if you feel that way about him. Yeah, you know, I like I like Logan Thomas, but offensively, I'm gonna have to say uh, Fitzpatrick. Yeah, yeah. I, I think his energy, all training camp long, and just being on the team, being in the locker room. Yeah. I mean, the guys behind him. Yeah. Uh, they can they can follow that that yeah. and pick up on that. I mean, it's just they. They know. I mean, they have enough veterans on the team to know that what it needs, what it what it takes to really win right. the football that, that's, season. That's right? such an interesting conversation, though, because like, I feel like culturally, you know, like you gotta like learn how to win, right? And all the veterans that have been here for a while, they've never really had that kind of spark. You know, you know how tough it is when you're like, you had to build something in San Francisco. You guys went from not good when you first right. got there to a Super Bowl contender, right? And like, what does that journey look like? Are there enough pieces in place to kind of replicate that 49ers team, in your opinion? To me, I feel like winning starts at the beginning. If you're a winner, you always know how to win, oh, right? Oh, interesting, yeah. And you look at the, they have a winning team. They have the Alabama boys. Yeah. There's a lot of Alabama boys in their life. But a lot of those Alabama they boys were on the win. teams where they only had three wins, remember, <laughs> Yeah, but you got guys like Jonathan Allen. I mean, like, I mean, he knows so, he know how to win. I mean, I Chase think, Young's young. He's, I, I he's wouldn't, like, I wouldn't disagree with Ryan Fitzpatrick. But how does that change if a guy goes down to injury and you know that he's going to be out for the foreseeable future? Come on, guys, let's do it for this guy. Like you, you're, you're playing for a lot of things, and if you have a guy that, that's well respected, like Fitzpatrick, right? We're, we're not only playing to win, we're not only playing for the team, but we're playing for our guy who just went down. When he comes back, who knows? He may not get the starting job. I was in San Francisco with the 49ers where yeah. Alex Smith went down, Colin Kaepernick came in, yeah. Alex Smith didn't get his job yeah, back. Right. We don't know, but you still have to play for this guy because he's a guy that's well respected. He's been around for a very long, a very long time and we have to do it for each other. Yeah. One of the things that Coach Rivera talks about a lot is like the maturity of the team. So kind of to your point, who is that leader? How do they bounce back? Right. When you do have such a young team, how do they bounce back from those losses? Is it the leaders? Is it the young guys being able to check themselves? Like, how do you find and build that maturity? I think it's really challenging. I mean, Vernon had like a methodology that worked for that San Francisco team, but I, you know, was a part of teams that really struggled. I think the only winning season I had in my whole career was 2012 here with Washington, you know? And that was tough. We kind of caught lightning in a bottle a little bit and guys were able to, you know, play off of good performance by other players and kind of rally behind certain guys. Robert Griffin III comes to mind. And I think they need a, some type of catalyst, some type of spark, and that can come from a coach, that can come from a player. It just depends on finding that, that moment, that piece of energy that, that catalyzes the whole, uh, the whole mixture. You, you mentioned Logan Thomas, since you both are tight ends, yeah. let me ask you this. Um, transitions from quarterback to the tight end position. He buys it. He's in love with the position now, and you can see that the way that he plays. Vernon, could you imagine changing positions 
and what position would you go to if you were to change from tight end? I'd probably go to try to go to quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Why not? Is it because the paycheck or? Oh no, no, you know what? No, it's not about the because tight end position. Look, look. We don't get enough respect, buddy. We have to know everything. We have to know blocking yeah. assignments. We have to read the coverage. We release from, releasing from the line of scrimmage and being able to keep your eyes up and look downfield and see what coverage it is. Yeah. Because th that dictates how we run our routes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because if I got a guy, if I have a route where maybe, well, it could be cover two, right? Yeah, yeah. And now, okay, now I know it changes if I have a, a comeback route. Because our routes, like, we can either turn inside or outside, yeah, yeah. depending on the leverage of the defense. And the rotation of the safety. Set. That's very important. Now, you miss that, oh, you're in trouble. You're so can, in trouble. So can you throw a football, though, Vernon? You know what? I would learn to throw a football. <laughs> I would go to quarterbacks, quarterback camp. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. Real quick here, position you would probably transition to. Yeah, so because I'm to. not a great athlete, I'd probably have to move in. So, like, usually athletic guys move in. So I'd have to be like probably an offensive center or like a guard or something just because I can't run anymore. So that's one thing Ryan Fitzpatrick said. He's like, I think he was he was like, I feel like I was born to be a lineman, probably. <laughs> you know, of course he has the big old beard that goes with it. He's like, maybe that was, you know, that was his calling in life as he fits right in there with those guys. Um, of course, we, we wish him, you know, a, a very speedy recovery as this team does adjust now to Taylor Heineke there. Um, OK, so it's time to say if you were to get a steak, is it how are you cooking it? I'm a medium rare guy. Medium rare. Medium. If you're Probably medium. Steak, medium. Medium? Yeah. It'd be medium rare. We are at a steakhouse. Maybe we have to order some steaks. We will be back and we'll talk about how the Washington football team should be stacking up in the NFC East. Keep it right here on Check Please, presented by DC Prime. Nachos, better with Pepsi. <sighs> hey man, we're back. We're back. Hey, you got any more of those fast plays? Tons, check them out. Cool. Oh. Um, you know what? We're gonna need a bunch of each. A bunch. <laughs> hey, thanks bud. Thanks bud. Fast play is fast fun for everyone. Oh, my peeps, look what I got. Ooh, hey, we'll play him on the ship. The Maryland Lottery has lots of fast play games, and some have a progressive jackpot. The modern world is a digital world, at home, at work, or on the go. We rely on data every day. Losing it can result in lost family photos, lost business, or even a lost job. Want to avoid these problems? You need cyber protection, where backup and cybersecurity meet. Only Acronis offers backup solutions that also stop ransomware before your files are damaged. It's easy, efficient, and secure cyber protection for all your data. Try Acronis free for 30 days. Go to Acronis.com today for modern cyber protection. Veterans, you may have earned a variety of VA benefits. Did you know VA can help you further your education and pursue professional training? The Home Loan Guarantee Program can help you buy, repair, or adapt a home. VA provides housing support if you find yourself homeless or at risk of homelessness. And don't forget world-class health care. Learn more about these and other VA benefits. Visit choose.va.gov. My work has been viewed by 100 million people. My work helps save lives. My work has gone platinum. My work gives people hope. I work at FedEx. Take your career to the next level with one of our many open positions. Check please here at DC Prime, getting our bellies full. All the extra food is still coming, enjoying ourselves here. Uh, but Vernon, Logan, let's talk a little bit about the team and kind of where they fit in the NFC East. 
Last year it was all the NFC least. Do you right. think it's going to be the same this year, or do you feel like that division is going to be more competitive? I think it's going to flip a little bit. I think, like, you know, with the return of Dak Prescott, I think Philadelphia looked pretty good. I know it's week one, like, don't overreact, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I think those teams are going to be pretty good and pretty competitive with the rest of the league. Obviously, Washington football team, I'd like to think that they're going to be up in that kind of conversation. Uh, but, you know, a lot, a lot of games still left to play. Um, yeah. I'm so do sorry. you get worked up over week one? No, it's Do you think it matters early. that yeah. much? Yeah. You can't really tell anything. I mean, a team can come out on fire next week. The next week after that, they're not doing yeah, so. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, week one is just kind of like, ah, uh, you know, How I'm back. Long? Welcome back. <laughs> How long does it then take for a team to kind of really start to hitting its stride where you start saying, okay, now we're clicking or now we need to be concerned? I think after the first three games, then you start, you start So week clicking. four. Yeah, yeah, week four. And you start, that's when you start finding your identity, right? And that's that's important. You want to find your identity. Who's the leader? Who's going to be? Who who's going to be accountable? You know, who, where where are my playmakers at? Who's going to come through all the time when it gets tough? You know, you find things about the team. We we now have you know the first year under head coach Ron Rivera. What would you say the identity of this team is or is shaping up to be, Logan? Well, I think each year it can vary. It's like especially we don't have like an established quarterback. The identity of the team changes, and I think it changes based a lot, in my opinion, off play callers, the defensive and offensive play caller, because they know how to feature certain elements of the team, receivers, tight ends, running backs, you know, how to uh, emphasize the skill set of the defensive line or linebackers. And then once that kind of starts rolling and that starts clicking at a high level, I find that that identity that Vernon's talking about comes along, like the playmakers step forward, like you find what you're good at as a team, and that's when all of it kind of grounds itself. And sometimes it takes a couple weeks, but I think that's only teams without a good quarterback. You look at Tampa Bay, like their identity, their identity is well established, right? Tom Brady, they know exactly what they are. Here at Washington football team, we're in a different situation. 17 games this year. First year that you have yeah. 17 games in a season. Does that make a difference on how you kind of, as a player, prepare yourself? Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, like, I mean, we know how brutal 16 games yeah. can be, right? When I heard that they were going to add an extra game, yeah, right. I said, "Wow, this is crazy." I mean, you a lot. What I find too that a lot of guys don't take care of themselves the way they do during the season. Like during the off season, they kind of, uh, "I'm gonna wait till the season gets here and then I'm gonna ramp it up," kind of thing. You know what I mean? I, and I think that's why I was able to go 14 years and not have any surgery. Yeah, I never had surgery. Right. You know, because I approach the off season just like we're in season. Yeah. Dude, I got a funny story about you. Do you remember this? So when you first came to the team in, uh, what was that? What was your first year here? I forget. 2000, no, 15? 16. 16? 16. So that off yeah. season, everyone was telling me, oh, don't worry about Vernon Davis. He's old, he's washed up, he can't run anymore, can't play. And I said, really, you think so? And then my agent was like, yeah, 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 don't worry about it. Remember you came in and you lifted weights the first time and you're throwing around 405 like it was nothing on the bench press. I was like, that looks, that looks pretty darn good, that, you know? And then I kind of went, we ran your first route in practice. And I remember you outran the quarterback's arm from the slot position as receiver. And no one's, I've never seen anyone do that before or since. And I thought to myself, well, I'm probably going to be looking for a new job here in about four weeks. So obviously you take great care of yourself in the off season. Oh, that is so funny. Yeah. That's hilarious, man. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, when you look at this division, do you think it's still Washington's to lose? I think I think Washington's gonna win. All right. Yes. <laughs> they're gonna win. And they're gonna win the division. That's what you're saying, right? I think they're gonna win yeah, the yeah. division. I, th I think they have all the potential in the world. They just have to just and get moving. I, why I mean, do you th Why do you think they're gonna win the division? Because they have all the pieces that they need. They just have to show that they can be consistent. Oh, okay. Consistency yeah. is everything. Like they just have to show it. They can do it. What's they, the challenge in consistency? Because it sounds simple. Look, I, I think I think if they can just figure it out, they they have to. We, I don't know, you don't know, we, none of us know what it is because we're not in that locker room, but they have to figure out how to put what they have together in a way that they can stay together and do it over the many 16 weeks, right? Yeah, so if And once they do that, okay. they will figure it out, my friend. They have all of the talent to get it done. You talk about that camaraderie. They're about to have their first road trip as well. Um, granted, in the preseason, they did go to New England, but now with the 53 in that team. Is, is there a different mindset as you get ready to go on the road? They're going to be going to Buffalo. 
which should be a good test to measuring stick of really where this team is, because some people are even saying Buffalo could be in the Super Bowl this upcoming year. What is that mindset like as you get ready for that first road I game? think if I'm going in, well, with, well defensively, I, I'm, I'm already thinking, right? If I, if I know I'm going to Buffalo and I'm facing a guy like Stefan Diggs, I'm, I'm going to be well prepared. I mean, I mean that, guy, that team's loaded. I mean, it's not just about Stefan Diggs. That team is loaded. They have a great coaching staff. They have a, a really good quarterback. I mean, they have all the pieces that they just like Washington, all the pieces that they need to win games. Now, like I said, Washington still has what it takes to be able to win. They just have to put it together. Do you, so I, you know, this is something I found that like sometimes certain teams, road games kind of galvanize the team. They kind of brought them together in a really nice way and they, you got a better product on the field as a result. Do you, did you play any teams like that? Did you ever play like that going on a road trip kind of saying, oh, you know, I got to play good in front of this opposing fan or the energy of the opposing team or the opposing fan base kind of got you going too? Well, it's different. I felt I, I played on teams where we played better at home and yeah. I played on teams where we played better away. Right. Yeah. You know and what I mean? What do you think that, what do you think is the, hate to put you on the spot. Maybe I actually don't hate it. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I, I can't figure it out because I don't know what everyone's thinking on yeah, that on, on the right. team. You know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. I just I don't know. I don't I don't know what it is. It well, is. we'll find out soon enough, right? When the team goes to Buffalo, how they do See on how the built. road, yeah. how they do. Of course, when they go on the road, they're probably going to be eating out. Maybe at home, they're eating at home and cooking. Um, real quick, if you were to cook, so you have a cooking show. What's what's your go-to meal you're going to be making? Oh, if I have a cooking show, do you strip that sweet potatoes? Really? I do you script the? Do you I script don't know the that they had yams. Scripted? On this yeah. No, it's not scripted. It's not scripted. You just make whatever you want. Oh no, we know we're gonna make going into yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We know we're gonna make. Yeah, Chef yeah. Boyardee. Yeah, there. we got the we got the recipe. We got you know what we're gonna make and well, uh, no, nah, I don't know if I know how to make it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you have That's to learn how to Sweet but, uh, potatoes for your making. What are you making if you're cooking? I don't cook you really. Just like you know, you just order the, the most okay. like utilitarian meal possible, <laughs> right? Whatever the calories equal, that's what I mean. That's how it goes. Because well, unfortunately, we don't have any yams here. No sweet potato yams. Aww. You yams guy? I love yams. <laughs> oh, I love sweet potatoes. I feel love like sweet that potatoes. With your diet, Vernon Davis. Although I saw you eat some macaroni. But he and can he can eat the mac and cheese as well, and still mac have the six pack. Yeah, yeah. Because he's running six a four I three. Six I didn't lose it. Yeah, how old are you? To stay in shape for 36. his movies. You think you still run a four three today? You know, I said thirty six. Gosh, I'm going backwards. I'm thirty seven, buddy. Bro, could you still run a four three though? Yes, absolutely. Oh my God. Oh, absolutely. I can run a four three. Come on, man. Burden. Logan, what? thanks so much for joining us on Check, Please. It was great catching up, talking about where you are now and where the team currently stands. Have some more mac and cheese, and then we'll put hey, the two of you to a do. race and see how your route running actually Let's goes. Let's go, Logan. Let's go. Let's go. Embarrass myself. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else I can bring for us tonight? Just the Check, Please, Jason. Thank you.